Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to This Week in Game Dev. This is week 39 of our recap of the news and events of the world of game development. Today we're looking at the um, news that happened for the week ending uh, September the 6th, 2016. And things are starting to pick up a little bit. We had a very dry, slow summer, but um, as today is September the 6th, most people are back to school today, uh, most people are back to work today, so we should start to see things pick up. And we have seen them a little bit, so let's jump right in. Uh, now again, as always, there will be a link to all of these links, so if you want more detail, just check the comment down below. There's a link to a page on Game From Scratch that actually has uh, all of these articles I'm about to go through. Uh, so our first release this week was OpenFL um, 4.1 and Lime 3.1. Now, uh, OpenFL is a hacks-based library. The whole idea behind it is um, OpenFL, the FL stands for Flash. So it's sort of a porting layer for people that want to move away from ActionScript and, and the Flash ecosystem and over to Hacks, which is uh, its own programming language, very cross-platform focused. So OpenFL imp tries to implement a lot of the... Um, the functionality you've got in Flash, including their 3D layer called uh, Stage 3D, which was um, kind of a big part focus of this particular release. You can see uh, a number of things added, mostly um, smaller incremental stuff. Now, the other thing that was released this week was um, Lime 3.1. Now, Lime is actually the technology stack that um, OpenFL is built on top of. So it's what provides the low-level cross-platform uh, guts, which, by the way, you can use the one without the other. So you can use Lime without OpenFL if you wish. So if you just want a low-level, um, it's almost like SDL level, maybe even a little bit lower than that, uh, framework for hacks, that's what Lime is. And you can see, again, pretty minor details in this particular release, uh, but it is nice to see this, uh, this ongoing development. Speaking of ongoing development, the Superpowers engine saw a release of version 2. Now, I actually started doing a tutorial series on using Superpowers. I think I linked it here. Yes, I did. And you see, I didn't get that far into it. I got four parts into it, and then I sort of stopped. And that's because while Superpowers was developing and releasing very quickly, it just dried up and stopped as well. So I actually thought the project was abandoned. But it's nice to see that they've actually uh, done two releases in the last two or three months, uh, with 2.0 being the next or the most recent release. Now, it did not jump that high. Now, it used to be like 0.2. Uh, they just changed their numbering system. So there's not a ton of new stuff in this actual release. Um, so they're, you're going to expect to see it go 2, 2, 5, 3 very rapidly as opposed to 0 0.2, 0 0.21, that kind of release schedule. Um, Mostly uh, changes and fixes, things like they upgraded. Now, keep in mind, Superpowers is actually split into multiple pieces. I guess I should explain for a sec what it is. It's a cross-platform HTML5 powered game engine, uh, but it's also like the tool, the library, and the framework. And they've also done ports to Lua. So it's a bunch of different projects now, split into different modules. So uh, this is the Superpowers tooling, uh, small upgrades, uh, added German support, improved Italian support, and then a bunch of fixes. Now, on top of that, we've also had upgrades to the core library. Again, a lot of it's language related uh, or just straight out bug fixes. Uh, the game layer, arcade physics, the Lua love layer got updates. Again, mostly the Italian and German releases, and then the web um, component of it. So it's basically becoming this collection of, of modules that work together to create games. Uh, it is an interesting project, the one that, you know, now that I know that it's being developed again, I do recommend you check out if you're interested. And again, I did do that tutorial series. It is linked at the top of this. Uh, I also believe it has a bit of an overview. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the Superpowers game engine, uh, do check that out. Now, another release this week was Spriter 2D Animation System released version 9. Uh, Spriter is along the same lines as... Um, oh, brain, come on, work. Uh, spine or creature. Uh, so those three packages kind of all work together. They allow you to do, um, basically you take a 2D image, you cut it up into pieces. So I would cut off like the arms, the head, the body, the leg, the weapons, etc. And then you use almost a traditional 3D style bone IK based animation. And they, these are capable of publishing out to a number of different runtimes or to generate sprite sheets for you. So if you're doing 2D animation, these are really kind of cool systems. Um, you can see a couple things on this release. Uh, Windows version now has access to additional gig of RAM. Uh, so if you're working on large projects, that's of course going to be nice. Uh, bounding box for animations using an automatic bounding box calculation, which again is nice. Uh, manually setting bounding box is a pain in the butt. Uh, crash detection, blah, 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 not very exciting. You can now nudge pivot point from one approximate pixel at a time using the arrow keys. Again, that's actually kind of nice for setting pivot points. Um, yeah, and then you can see there's several bug fixes in this release as well. Now, another release this week was Unity 5.5 Beta was released. Now, this is um, kind of a fork in the direction. This is more of a preview release of what's coming soon. 
And truth be told, there's not actually a hell of a lot in this. For such a major jump in release, we just went from basically 5 to 5.5 .5 on this one. So I kind of thought there'd be a lot more here, but there really isn't that much. The big thing is they've got um, improvements to the particle system, new modules for uh, lights, noise, and trails, a new 2D capsule collider for physics, um, some editor changes. They've updated the uh, version of um, Xamarin or C Sharp that's being used. It's now up to mono 4.4, but that's just using the tooling. It's still the ancient version of C Sharp that um, Unity has always used. It's just using the most current compilers. And this is a move to eventually over time and finally move to like C Sharp 5 or 6. So, like, you know, bring us into the modern days, not 10 years ago. So, yeah, not the greatest release ever, but there's quite a bit and more there in, than in the traditional Unity patches, at least. Uh, now, Coco's Creator, sorry, Coco's 2DX 3.3, 3.13, 3 can't speak, and Coco's Creator 1.2.1 were both released this week. Now, Coco's 2DX is a C++ port of the Coco's 2D library. It's been around forever, probably over a decade at this point in time. It's a complete 2D media framework. I've actually done a full tutorial series on using Coco's 2DX, so if you want to learn more, come on in here and click that link right there. Um, it goes into some detail about all the pieces you need to know. So pretty much, you can think of it this way, Coco's 2DX is C++ 2D game framer. And Coco's Creator is built on top of the Coco's 2D uh, X JavaScript port. So it is a uh, complete game engine editor environment, but built on top of the JavaScript uh, projects. But they are doing some work towards supporting Lua. So I'm not really sure exactly where that has gotten. We can see there's a lot of fixes and, and tweaks going on here. Um, the big thing with the Cocos 2DX, and this is weird for kind of 2D, uh, but uh, they've got VR plugins for the gear, uh, the Deepoon, which I have no idea what that is. You know, Cocos 2DX is really big in China, so I'm assuming that's a homegrown uh, Chinese VR system. Uh, Google Cardboard and the Oculus Rift. Uh, support for Elf Channel, uh, ETC1 Elf Channel, and then some fixes, improved uh, render performance and the canvas. So. You know, not, nothing earth shattering, but I, I guess if you're working in VR, there's definitely something big in this release for you. Uh, another game engine release this week, and I do also have a tutorial series for it that I'm actually currently working on, is the default engine just saw release uh, 1.2.87. Uh, nothing's gonna like rock your world here. Things like ability to see the text node in the editor. I guess it's the size of the text node in the editor, which is useful, I guess, if you're placing text. Uh, toggle physics debug at runtime, particle count, web profile, and visual profile, or, uh, you know, just little fixes up beyond that stuff. Nothing, you know, earth shattering, but another incremental release. Uh, another bigger release this week was Unreal Engine 4.13 was released. Uh, so we've been seeing the previews, and the whole thing about this one basically is Sequencer. So their primary stuff they're working on right now is Sequencer. You can see a screenshot of it right here. Now, Sequencer is a nonlinear editor, or an NLE. Um, and these are basically used to bring a whole bunch of stuff together and to create, you know, if you've ever used, um, uh, oh, it was Macromedia's project. Almost you can even think of Flash as a nonlinear editor, to be honest. So if you've got all these timelines at the bottom and you kind of can bring all these different pieces in together to make movies. Um, I use a nonlinear editor when I'm done videotaping this so that I can, um, you know, add the banner at the front or, you know, change the sound, etc. So uh, that's where NL NLE comes in. And what Sequencer allows you to do, first off, is cutscenes. Some very advanced cutscenes you can... Um, you know, bring together various different pieces, 3D renders, 2D images, sounds, music, etc., into, uh, you know, a cohesive whole. But they're also looking at this to making, uh, I don't know if this is the right pronunciation, but machima or machinima, uh, but basically film computer-based movies. And actually they're going after the real movie market. Now, I'm not sure how many people are going to start making movies directly in Unreal, uh, but it's interesting to see them go this route. So we've seen a lot of updates to the sequencer, and that's kind of the big part of this actual release. And of course, this is Unreal engine so there are of course new things to make it a little bit more pretty and it's the prettiest engine on the market for the most part of the maybe cry engine uh, you know kind of a flip up on that one uh so you know you're always going to expect to see a couple more new graphical tweaks in every new unreal engine release um so on the mobile front uh dynamic shadows were optimized full precision materials are now supported custom approach <laughs> Excuse me. Custom post processing is now possible. Uh, OpenGL 3.1 ES 3.1 is now available. Uh, so definitely some nice improvements on mobile there, and some improvements on VR, including a new VR template. So basically, that's like a getting starting project, and uh, also some updates to the VR editor, which is the ability to actually use Unreal uh, Engine with a VR headset to develop your Unreal game in VR. Um, 
Another small patch, uh, so this is the, in sequence, this is the previous non 5.5 beta, but so the production version of Unity 5.4.0 saw patch 4 released. And the truth of the matter is it's 100% fixes. And this makes sense because if they're doing the 5.5 beta, the new functionality will go in the beta and fixes and tweaks will go in the patches. So unless you're looking for a specific fix, but you'll see there's actually a lot of them in this particular release. Excuse me, I'm totally losing my voice here. Which is good because we only have one piece of news left to cover, and that is Zenko 1.8 was released. Now, Zenko is the game engine previously known as Paradox 3D, and hey, you know what? I did a tutorial series on it as well uh, back when it was still called Paradox, but it should still be pl equally applicable. Uh, so if you are interested in learning more about that, do check that out. I also featured it in the Coastal series. So if you want an idea of what this engine offers you, that's a good place to start. But basically, it's a 2D, 3D, C-sharp powered, uh, currently free game engine. Uh, the big thing that they've done here is they've added a UI editor that runs directly inside of their game editor. Uh, so it comes with a full level editing environment along the lines of you know, Unity and Unreal. And now it's got a UI editor built in there as well. Uh, a couple of other fixes is this as well, multi-threaded rendering and Vulkan support. Now, some people are really excited to hear about Vulkan support. Me, it's one of those back-end technologies that should be transparent to you. And, you know, day one, we're not seeing a huge amount of increase in performance, if any at all, from Vulkan. A lot of times it's about break-even to what traditional OpenGL rendering speeds are. Uh, but there are some people that are absolutely waiting on Vulkan support, so that'll be a big deal to some. Uh, there's a prefab model now available, so it's an optimized model with baked textures and merged geometry. This is actually kind of nice. What it does is it looks at your mesh and your textures and optimizes them so that they render faster. Uh, nice functionality there. They added SSAO, which is Scalable Ambient Obscurance, uh, it's just a rendering um, method. And they added cell, shender, cell shading rendering model as well. So you can now render your games in that cartoony, uh, anime-ish looking cell shaded graphic style. Uh, it's a little less popular than it was, but it's definitely uh, you know, a nice option for people that are going for that artistic style. And then there's a number of uh, smaller bug fixes and enhancements, as you can see from this complete list. I'm not really going to get into details on it. The big things were definitely that uh, new UI editor and then these uh, Vulkan support, multi-threaded rendering, etc. And before I completely lose my voice, that is it. I'm going to wind it up. There's you know quite a bit more news this week than there has been the last couple weeks. And on a more personal level, uh, summer's over, which means my daughter is back in school, which means I have a heck of a lot more time. So if you notice things have been a little slow around these parts, I uh, do expect that to get better over the next couple of weeks because I do have a lot more time to work on various different projects. So I uh, do expect more content from game from scratch from this point on both here and on gamefromscratch.com um, and if you did like that please do click like if you want to see this kind of stuff more and more i do it every week uh click on uh subscribe and i hope you won't be disappointed also i am at game from scratch on twitter if you uh you know want to follow someone else on twitter that's about it i hope you enjoyed that hope you found it useful see y'all later